Velkommen alle sammen! This is just a super random video. First day back in Norway and walking out at a place where my friend showed me there might be some Viking graves there and I had never heard of it so I just was not prepared. I thought there was gonna be, you know, one burial mound and it ends up being like one of the biggest. Shit. Ooh. There has been either a dog here or maybe a fox. But anyway, what I'm about to show you is one of the biggest and oldest burial sites and religious places that was uh, used back in the Viking Age and even long before, 500 years go uh, before Christ, so going back to the Bronze Age almost. So this was just a super spontaneous, you know, trip in the woods. Luckily I had my camera with me, but the sound quality is gonna be shit. But I hope you enjoy this. I'll be back. I'll probably do the desub route here uh, uh, in a couple weeks when that's coming up. So we'll get a more in-depth explanation there. But uh, yeah, this is the video for now. Where are the graves? The graves are further that way. Okay, there. Looks like Odin and his two ravens there. Yeah, and this will be a sacred well, or we'll see if it's still there. We'll walk there right now, but it, uh, it either was a well or a spring or something. So let's see if it's still there. That's the shirt. That means um, you can see some of the craters, it says, where the uh, where the graves were robbed. It says Pindret, but what a lot of people don't know is this was a normal ritual um, that they would break into their ancestors' graves to get some of the uh, valuable things in there, the treasures and the property, uh, not to rob them, but it was just because to take those things as almost like inheritance and remember who they were in past lives. And, that, and these are all from, wow, these are from 500 years before Christ. So this is going back to the very early Iron Age, even Bronze Age in Scandinavia, up until the Viking Age. So this, these are actually much older than the Viking Age. Already there and all the way back that way and they've restored some of it but in ancient times they would travel through this way and it says there to not disturb the grave place and not disturb like the vegetation around it and the farmland around it uh, so this was this was what we can call a viking highway so we found here this is what could have been the well there's a good body of water here and it looks like it's you know, came from some very old times with these stones that were placed there before. So it could have been that the well was actually right here. It's covered by trees now. But this could have been a very sacred well or spring. And that's why they chose this for a burial place. But uh, when the farmlands came in, they dug these and now it's, this goes out into the farm field to basically irrigate the crops and you know how farming communities do that they dig out a long kind of river along the side and then they'll put like pipes into the land to uh, give the uh, crops water so this was probably a very old sacred well uh, but they destroyed it <laughs> when Christianity came in to build their farmland so this was a fence built to so the Viking Wall, right? And this would be the typical enclosure that we would find in a lot of these sacred spaces. Um, 
they were different in some places. In England, the like kind of sacred spaces were covered with just kind of like a fence. Um, and some were covered in stones like this, stone built walls. And sometimes, um, especially the famous temple at Uppsala, it said that there was a golden chain enclosing the whole area. So here is some stones we have, but um, it doesn't go around the whole thing, but this would have been like the main entrance, it seems like. So maybe the town was down that way, or maybe the camping site was down that way where the festivals would happen. And then everybody comes in and walks through this entrance. And this is where the sacred space starts and where you're supposed to behave. You do the partying over there like they would have done for the three day festivals. But for the special religious ceremonies, they would come in here and be on their best behavior. So this is the middle of the kind of hole I, we, we saw back there. There was graves going in the woods for there was 10 of them you said didn't you at least 10 so and then there was trees still growing out of the mounds like on top of rocks so very weird but so those over there seem like they were the oldest and these ones here are probably from the viking age the newest ones and as you can see here there this is the craters where you can see where they broke into the graves and took the uh, valuables of the people who were buried in there so that's one but there's tons of this all over and this is a, a grove right so very little undergrowth but lots of trees and, and space to walk in between so these were considered sacred places in the Norse beliefs so we'll see what else we can find so this this here is like the biggest and largest stone in the middle of the sacred place where all these burial sites are and this is probably we're not sure of course but if we had to guess this would be either where the thing would be held so like the annual meetings or religious uh, uh, rituals or things like that or maybe even the sacrifices uh, would be practiced on this thing this would be the hörge as they were called in Old Norse so this is for the biggest and toughest stone here and this is probably uh, yeah, where the central site of this sacred place here. So there's a ton of graves here. This looks like there's 50 of them. I wish I would have brought you my see this microphone. One. All of the ones that have a crater, those are going to be the ones that have been broken into. And you see the, uh, the burial mounds. If there were trees growing from them, that was believed to be extra special because the ancestors' spirits was believed to be carried onto this tree. They would die in the burial mound, and then if a tree grew from it, it means you know part of their spirit, not all of it, would have turned into a tree. Which pretty much all of these burial mounds have trees growing out of them. Uh, so who knows how old all of these are, but I'm not so good with trees, but yeah, the, the last people were buried here around the year 1000, as it said on that sign there. So it could be that old or older. So walking up this way, just a little bit further from the main uh, enclosed burial site and religious site there, we see a bunch of smaller little mounds here. Now, mounds that were buried kind of outside of the enclosed uh, cemetery area. Uh, they would, you know, not all the time, but some of the time, they would be shown in archaeology as people who were buried with, like, less respect, like kind of people who were just chucked in there. And, and, and they were maybe uh, believed to be criminals or witches or something like that. And that's why they were buried outside of the main burial site. But here, we have a massive one. And it's also been broken into, like you see there from that little crater. Uh, so this one was buried with really a lot of respect. So it is possible that the person buried in here could be a very powerful, you know, witch who was respected 
definitely because she got a big massive uh, grave but she was also feared so they didn't want her spirit uh, in the uh, burial traditional cemetery over there and notice how there are no trees growing from this one at all a thousand years and doesn't look to be any sign of a tree growing out of this but they did break in so maybe her family broke into that mound a bit later on uh, to get some possessions but they made sure that her spirit, you know, kind of stayed in there. Um, just, just a possibility, but we really don't know these types of things.